Yo, yo, yo. It's Nero King here. Hope you're doing well and thank you for clicking on my video. Today I'm going to make a bit of a guide on how Iron Men can get their ancient scepter. This comes from the Phantom Musper boss and this is how you go about doing it. So I'll just put on screen some of the requirements that you need. So, there are some things that you must have. These are not negotiable. Um, you know, I'm not going to talk about how you can do this on some super insane god tier mode where you, you know, tick eating everything and, and so on. This is a guide for those who want to reliably farm the boss um, at quite an early stage. And this might help motivate people who feel like they can't due to seeing all of the really high level, high geared players killing it. Um, that was my case. I felt quite demotivated by seeing that and seeing them get the kills in about two to four minutes. Thinking to myself that it might take myself quite a lot longer. After doing a bit of math and research, I came to the conclusion that this was possible and that it would be about a five hour grind to get myself the Ancient Scepter. I could go and upgrade my gear to a Bofa, Crystal Armor and so on. Um, and that would save me about two or three hours on this grind. But going ahead and getting that gear is a several hundred hour grind on its own. And I wanted the Ancient Scepter now. So, you absolutely can do this. Just bear in mind that you will lose about three hours of your time if you do go down this route. So, the must-have requirements. Obviously, you're going to need the quest. Um, the boss is unlocked through that quest, Secrets of the North. So you can't do this without them. You're going to need access to decent ranged armor and a crossbow that can use adamant bolts. You're going to need 65 fletching as an Iron Man to make yourself diamond adamant bolts and ruby adamant bolts as well. You're going to need 57 magic to enchant those bolts. You're going to need 52 herb lore for super energy potions or a means of getting super energy potions. I would upgrade those to stamina potions if you have them. You must have 44 prayer for protection prayers and eagle eye. I would not start at 43, I would go ahead and get 44. The 15% ranged accuracy will help you out quite a lot. 72 mining for wise teleport crystals. It is not viable to do this boss without, as you need a way of repeatedly going back to wise, and for that reason, you really do need wise teleport crystals. I do not know of an efficient way of getting to wise without them, and it would just take you way too long, so go and get yourself 72 mining. If you're determined, find a way to get to wise by other means. We've already talked about magic. So, some recommended requirements. These are requirements that you can kind of ignore if you must, um, but I would not do that. So these are what this is what I would recommend as your minimum. I would strongly recommend completing a kingdom divided to unlock yourself the Thrall spells. The Thrall spells will add a lot of damage to your kills, and for that reason, I consider them almost a must-have. But you can do this boss without, so that is why they are recommended. This is something that will help your account out long term anyway. You are going to want Throws for the majority of your combat on this game. So go ahead and unlock those anyway. But you can do this without. It will just take longer. It is highly recommended to have a healthy supply of prayer potions cooked Karam 1 and super energy potions. Now, you can get away with having maybe 10 prayer potions in the bank when you start, 
and putting down some Ranar seeds in your various allotments and collecting them when you run out of prayer potions. That's what I did because I'm hesitant to plant prayer potions until I need them. So you can go about it that way if you wish. In regards to cooked Quran once, um, this to me is almost a must-have requirement. I would not use any other food, but you can get away with using sharks and manta rays. If you don't know, cooked Quran ones, they take one tick less to eat. That means you can do damage in one tick less time. So essentially, if you're eating sharks and manta rays, you are losing about one third of your damage because those take three ticks to eat. Whereas Kawambans, they take two ticks to eat. So you will lose about one third of your damage just through that alone. So do go ahead and get cooked Kawambans. They are quite easy to access. I'm sure most Iron Man know how to get cooked Kawambans, but check the wiki if you don't. Finally, there are a few more recommended requirements. You need a reliable means of getting adamant bolts. I would say around 300 to 500 adamant bolts for this. Um, there are various ways you can go about getting those. So I'm not going to list those off for you. Just go ahead and check the wiki um, and figure it out for yourself. I would highly recommend having a rune pouch. You do not want to find yourself in a situation where your kill, um, you, you are two food short and you're unable to get the kill. There has been situations where I've used all of my food for the kill. So to mitigate that, I would go ahead and get a rune pouch. And again, that's if you're using throws, because if you're not using throws, don't bother bringing a rune pouch as well. You're going to need cash for buying blood, cosmic, and fire runes for Throws. Now thankfully this boss does drop a lot of alkables, so you will not lose any money. In fact, you will profit gold while killing this boss as an Iron Man. So it is very unlikely that you will lose, uh, you will run out of money for that. But to get started, you are going to need a cash stack to buy some blood, cosmic, and fire runes. Not much. I would say buy, I don't know, 500 blood runes, 100 cosmic runes, just enough to get you started. And lastly, you're going to need an efficient way of banking and restoring attributes. For example, Ferox Enclave, prayer, uh, sorry, a restoration pool in your house, um, dueling ring teleports or spirit tree in your house. Pick a way that works for you. The minimum is Ferox Enclave. So I'm going to head over to the game and demonstrate how the kill works, what kind of gear I would bring, and so on. Okay. So I would bring your best ranged bonus. So for me, that is what I'm equipping now. Now some of you might not have all of these items and that's completely okay. So I'll just take off some of these and show some alternative options. And you absolutely can get the kill with this. I just did it before to test if this was the case. So please don't stress if you don't have these. So this is your minimum. You also need diamond bolts and sapphire bolts E. It's very important that you have access to sapphire bolts E. You then want to take out the following from your bank. For me, I use house teleports as my way of restoring attributes. So I would draw some of those, and I always leave one in the bank, because if you die, you need a way of getting back. You could also use wise teleports for that. Then you want to take out three prayer potions. For most times, most of the kills, you'll only use about one or two prayer potions. I would bring out three, because sometimes you might get stooged on RNG, 
and you don't want to find yourself running out of prayer. You are then going to want to redraw the best tier of ranging potion that you have. For me that is a divine ranging potion. So that is what I will be bringing. You will then need a stamina potion. I would say you can do this with super energies. I've seen it done before. I bring stamina potions to make it easier on myself. Now I want to get this video over and done with because it's already a bit of a long one for you guys. So I will be putting on my best ranged bonus. But just take off take a minute off your kill. It's absolutely fine. You will probably spend an extra 20-30 seconds on average with slightly worse. It's okay. Finally, we draw some cooked kawambines and then head over to white. I forgot to be on the Arceus spellbook. So I'll pause the video here and I'll go and get on the Arceus spellbook. I'm back. I apologize as well. I have forgotten to mention one additional thing. Mistakes do happen. So I apologize if you've already made your way to Weiss. You probably picked up on it based on the requirements. You want to withdraw a rune pouch and put in it cosmic runes, blood runes and fire runes. So we'll head over to Weiss. I have put a Weiss portal in my house and a restoration pool in there. This makes it nice and quick. But you can do this with the regular Weiss teleport crystals. Just get yourself about 70 of those. Head through these gates and over the rock and down the stairs. And then head through this cave here. Come on down here to this entrance. And if you've not killed this boss before, talk to the sergeant about what's in here and he will let you in. Now, I will in a moment I will demonstrate how the kill is done. But before we get into that, I'm going to explain some of its mechanics. So there is around about four different things, four, four different phases that you need to be aware of. The first two are phases that alternate. That is the ranged slash magic phase and the melee phase. It's completely random whether the boss starts on a mage slash ranged or a melee phase. You need to deal about 100 damage to either of these phases for them to switch and every 100 damage you do will cause him to switch. So, for the melee phase, he will do melee attacks. Pretty straightforward. However, there's a catch. You do need to pray melee and if the boss does not move when he goes to attack you, he will deal a hit. And that hit can be around a 30 or anything below that. So the aim is to ensure that the boss is moving when they go to hit you, or to not hit you at all. But as long as he is moving on the same tick, the same game tick that he hits you, he will deal a zero. There are two ways you can handle this. The first one is simple. Just run around the room in a circular motion, making sure that you're dealing damage to him and that he is moving the entire time, or mainly when he's about to attack you. The second way is called the step out method, and this is a bit more advanced. So I would recommend checking out Solo John on YouTube, that's J-A-W-N. He has a video showing what the step out method looks like. This is the exact same thing as the first one in that it's making sure that the boss is always moving when he goes to attack you. I will not be demonstrating this because I do not wish to learn it. 
I have tried to learn it. It's just quite challenging for me. So I do not wish to participate. But you absolutely should go and learn that if you plan on doing this boss for several hundred kills. Now, the range slash magic phase. In this phase, you for the most part, you want to be having your protect from range prayer on. And when you see him stop doing a ranged attack, launch himself in the air and summoning a purple orb, you immediately want to put on your magic prayer. If you don't put on your magic prayer, this will hit you for nearly a 40, and then your prayer points will drain at a faster rate. Immediately after he does his magic attack and it hit you, put on your range prayer. Now he can do a magic prayer, magic attack again, but you will just switch to your magic prayer if that happens. There's two last phases that you need to worry about. That is the phase where he shoots orbs around the room. In this phase, it's very important to dodge the orbs floating around the room. You can continue to do damage during this phase, but it's very important that you make sure you keep your health high and you dodge the orbs. Finally, the phase, the last phase that you really need to worry about. There are a couple more phases, but they are not as important to know just yet. So we'll talk about those in a moment. But the big one is when the boss reaches 130 health, you need to find yourself behind a stalagmite that is blocking the boss's vision from you. If you don't, the boss will probably one-shot you. It hits a 70 or something along those lines. So there's a very high chance you will die. Okay. There are a couple of other mechanics that you need to know about. Every time the boss changes phase, as in you've done 100 damage and that phase has died, it will spawn a stalagmite underneath you. You simply just move when the boss is changing phases and you will avoid that damage. If you walk into a stalagmite, you will take a 15 and you will be stunned for about two or three ticks. So you will not be able to move. This can be quite deadly if you get caught next to the melee. You might not die if you keep your health high, but it can be quite deadly. I have died to this myself. Then, at some point throughout the fight, the boss will summon stalagmites that chase you around the room. It's quite easy to avoid, just keep your distance between them. Now, it can be quite useful to be around the center of the room when the phase is ending, so as to put a stalagmite in the center of the room to stand behind for later on. Finally, there is one last phase, sorry, two more phases. When the boss reaches 150 and has done his one-shot attack, he will then go into a phase where you put on your mithril sapphire bolts and you want to flick between your ranged and magic prayers and the smite prayer. This boss cannot take damage without first draining his prayer points and so it is imperative that you have these sapphire bolts for that. Once that phase is ended he will go into his enraged phase and that is his final phase. In this phase every few attacks stalagmites will start covering the room. The way to ensure that the room does not get fully covered is to move only one square away from an existing stalagmite. So always be a square away and then when they spawn, move an additional square. Do not run around like a headless chicken because you will cover the entire room in stalagmites and you will be unable to get the kill and you will have to teleport out or you will die. So just stay as close to the walls and stalagmites as you can. Keep doing damage keep using your diamond bolts and the kill will be done. 
that's everything you need to know. So I'll now go in and I will demonstrate a kill. Now, in this melee phase, you can bring a trident of the seas or swamp, if you have it. That is more damage. But I do not have those, so I'm using rage. God, this kill is so scarfed, it's not even funny. I haven't done this for like a week, but even if it is scarfed, it shows that you can do it. Also shows what happens if you don't do it right, which is a good demonstration in my opinion.
And there you have it. Phantom Muspa. And we got a Veneta Shard. Nice. There you go. You guys witnessed me getting a Veneta Shard. So that's how it's done. It's pretty straightforward. In a way, I'm glad that I made mistakes because it showed you guys what that looks like. Um, and what not to do. So yeah. I hope this has helped you. And good luck on your journey to getting the Pharaoh's Scepter, Ancient Scepter, and the Veneta Bow. Alright guys, thank you for watching. Bye!